Hi and welcome to a new vlog. I have just dropped Gussie at school and on the way back from school I pass Newbridge Nurseries. They've just redone it and I haven't been in for a while but I'm here really nice and early. I am not blurry eyed but I'm feeling I've hay fever. It's not as bad as it normally is. I've been taking homeopathic medicine but my eyes are a bit um, stingy and sore with it so I'm a bit yeah I didn't drink too much last night although I did have a glass of rosé but only one. Anyway I want to pop in to Newbridge and have a really really quick whiz. There's a couple of things I want to look for and a few more things for the kitchen garden. I have, I have sown a few things, or grown a few things from seed for the kitchen garden. Normally I grow a lot more, but actually this year, this just hasn't happened. There's been too much going on, and so actually I have cheated. It's not really cheating, but um, I just want to get some more lettuces. So I'm gonna go and have a look for that. And I also want to look at shrubs, although it's not really the right time of year, but if I see something, I've got a few shrubs I want to replace and a few that I want to put in but I'm going to take you around the garden with me um, and show you what I've been up to, what I'm doing, what I'm planning on doing, what I still need to do and all of that. So anyway, enough waffle, I must get cracking and let's go and have a quick whiz in Newbridge Nurseries. I'm pretty impressed, they've got this great kitchen section. and. Um, I thought I'd just quickly show you. I'm loving these lemons. And look, they've got silicon straws. And I rather like those. So they're plastic, they're melamine. And there's some lovely olive things over there. And then these are great tablecloths because you can wipe them and you can put them in the washing machine. But I'm not here for the kitchen. I'm here for gardening stuff. So we're going to go outside. I've got a big trolley. Look, they've got, hang on, I think I go out that way. Um, they've got a big toy section. They've got all sorts in here now. It's really exciting. Oh, and I just spotted their barbecues. I am about to start my barbecue course, an online course, a week long barbecue course. And I'm intrigued to see these. So, Weber barbecues. This is the one. I think we've got this one. But an amazing section and pizza ovens. So this is the veggie section that I have come to. Let's have a quick look around and see what I would like to get. Lettuces. Little gem lettuces. Take some of those. Oh, and I like the look of that as well. So here I am at Juliana Hill Circle. We have a shop now in Hazelmere and I have brought a few goodies which I will share with you later once I'm home because I actually am a little bit rushed. But it's just a feast, a feast in here of wonderfulness. You know I love pre-loved and this is the place to come. I will put the links to Juliana in the description of this video so you can check it out but just wonderful in here and now i have left juliana's and i am coming to see wendy at the lodsworth clinic so wendy has got a new premises and i'm going to have a facial i'm going to sit down i'm going to chill out and relax and be pampered by wendy so this is the treatment room. It's just so clean, so calm. I have turned the lights off because they were flickering on the camera, but I can't wait to lie down there and be pampered by Wendy. I thought I would share with you a few things I'm really, really loving at the moment. And the first thing is hair related. And it's from L'Occitane. They have had their shampoo bar for a little while, but they've just bought out their conditioner solid bar. I've been thoroughly putting it through its paces. We actually all have as family. The boys have been using this one and Coco and I have been using the conditioner too. I've been using it from like the middle of my hair down to the ends. And it is incredible. My hair is 
light, it is fluffy, not, not, not fluffy, but kind of fancy. It feels great without being weighed down by a conditioner. And for me, not having the best hair in the world, I don't want it to be weighed down, but I want to use a product that I know is full of goodness. This has got five essential oils in it, including lavender and geranium, so it smells amazing but it is also silicon and sulfate free. And because it comes in recyclable cobalt packaging, there's absolutely no plastic. So it's great for the environment. And this little bar is the equivalent of two bottles of conditioner. That's how long it lasts for. So a little bit goes a really long way. And I'm really loving that. L'Occitane have kindly given me a discount code to share with you of Charlie at checkout. And if you spend over £40 and buy a solid bar of conditioner or shampoo, you get this soap dish for free. And actually, it's really handy having this soap dish because I know that, that there could be no confusion over a bar of soap. I know that this is for our hair. So this is firmly living in our bathroom and being used and enjoyed. And I honestly, it is amazing. I can't, I can't recommend to you products I don't wholeheartedly believe in and that is just gorgeous. Now moving on from hair to skin. I use as you know SPF 50 every single day on my face which means my face gets no sun, no colour, I wear a sun visor as much as I possibly can if it's a bright day or a hat. This is the SPF that I have been using now for a few years and I love it but I needed a little bit of colour in my face and Hannah at Gift Pop Boutique, who is a friend, recommended these. Balance Me Gradual Tanning Drops and I've been using these now for the last, gosh, actually probably about a month. I don't use them every day but I just add a little bit into my moisturiser. So these drops are a concentrate and they must be mixed with the moisturiser. So actually at bedtime, probably three times a week, I just put my moisturiser in my hand, add in a few drops, mix, you know, like do that and then all over the face. Because it's not like a fake tan, you don't have to be careful of your hairline or your eyebrows. You do need to wash your hands afterwards, but the Balance Me Gradual Tanning Drops, I am loving right now. And the other thing that I am loving, I bought it in here, because it normally lives by my bed, oh. is Tam Mason's Nourishing Hand Oil. I keep this on my nightstand and literally the last thing I do before I go to bed is put a few drops in my hands and there is lavender in here, there is rose, there's also thyme and I rub it into my hands and then I just, I think Simon thinks I'm a bit of a weirdo, I sit there sniffing my hands and rubbing them together before I turn the light out and say goodnight to him. But it just, it just smells amazing and then you know you've got this oil on your hands so the goodness can soak in and just look after your hands as well and actually with my SPF 50 I rub it into the back of my hands as well after I put it onto my face because um, you know I think I spend so much time outside with the horses and in the garden and you know my life is, is predominantly well it's, if I'm not outside I'm in the kitchen washing up and cooking and doing things so my hands get quite a battering so this hand oil is really really gorgeous highly recommend that now I took you for a whistle top tour of Juliana's shop circle in Hazelmere I actually only had seven minutes from the moment I walked into the shop to leaving the shop because I had my appointment with Wendy, my facial. So it's really tight on time. And I did buy a couple of bits I'm gonna share with you and show you, try them on and show you in a minute. In fact, I haven't even taken them out of the bag because life has been totally, totally crazy since then. The children, and um, well Gus in particular, has had a really, really nasty tummy bug. And so we've had a couple of nights of not very much sleep being up with him. It was pretty alarming too, because he was having um, like,
like panic attacks. He was really struggling to breathe, like uh, hyperventilating. And actually I rang, here in the UK, we've got this amazing service, 111, and you get through to, um, uh, not to a doctor, but to a medic, and, and you chat through the symptoms and what's going on, and then they can put you through to 999 if they think it's serious, and actually they did. And an ambulance came, and they were amazing. They were here, the paramedics were here with him for a couple of hours. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly checked him over. They were so kind and lovely. He didn't need to go into hospital. We calmed him down. We worked out actually what was going on and throughout the day, every time he was really unwell, which was quite a lot, he would then start to hyperventilate. I obviously now know that that can happen to him and not to panic and just to try and, you know, reassure him and get him to breathe properly. So. I haven't even got the clothes out of the bags yet because it's been crazy, it's been bonkers and I'm a little bit tired but I thought we'd get them out now and I would share with you exactly what I bought and show you them on. So before I change into my clothes that I bought from Juliana I wanted to share this with you. So this bag is from Vanessa Rose Somerset. It is handmade, it's beautiful. I used it all of the Jubilee weekend because I just think it's such a pretty bag. But it's also really versatile. It's a great size. You could take it to the beach. You could take it for, you know, all sorts of things. It's got this little clothes there and then it's got a pocket inside. It's really, really beautifully made and it's just a gorgeous bag for this time of year. I just, um, it makes me happy. And it's quite nice not having a really kind of heavy leather bag on your shoulder. You can just put your essentials in here, but there's space to put, you know, quite a few bits. You can put a jumper in there, you can put a book in there, a bottle of water, your phone, car keys, and off you go. So really, really loving that at the moment, but I'm gonna change. So these are from um, Stepping Out Boutique in Midhurst. Absolutely love these, I spend, a lot of time wearing these trousers. The weather has got so much better here, but it's still not quite short weather, I don't think. Um, I hate being cold, so I'm quite liking wearing longs. They're sort of, well, <laughs> I'm gonna fall over. You can roll them up, so you can be, you know, full length or ankle, depending on what takes your fancy. So the first thing I bought was these jeans from Juliana. So they are pre-loved, they're Victoria Beckham. They've got these kind of tears, but what I quite like about it is, let me move it down, is it's patched because I don't, I don't know if it's my age, I don't like showing flesh in ripped jeans all the time. There's sort of, particularly not up here, but I'm really thrilled with these. They're full length, so great in the winter, but you can, you know, roll them up if you wanted to go for sort of more crop style. And I just really, really love the fit. They are comfy, they are soft, really thrilled with them. I will wear them, of course, with my peachy belt. That's currently on my other pair of trousers, but really thrilled and I don't know what they would have been just move it back up what they would have been full price but you know you can get a great pair of jeans pre-loved without spending an absolute fortune and then I bought the most incredible dress which I cannot wait to try on and show you I am just in love with this dress I just think it's amazing so it's from Millie, New York, but obviously I bought it pre-loved. I love navy, I love a ruffle, but I love this band here across the middle. And then it is probably a bit shorter than I would normally go for, mainly because my scar from my accident is on show, but actually I would be wearing this for a formal occasion. And so I would wear tights with with heels i've just put these let me show you um pointy moves which actually i think works really well or you could wear um in fact i've got some navy evening shoes that i could wear with it if i wasn't wearing it during the day 
You could wear it with a hat to go to a wedding. You could wear it to the races. I love this different neckline. I just think it's so pretty. I'm obviously wearing it with a strapless bra because of the cutaway here. The bra straps would show, so I've just put a strapless bra on. But I just think it's the best find ever. I just, I am so, so, so pleased with this. So I'll put a cutaway so you can see kind of full length here of, of how it looks. But just such a great find. And when I went in to see Juliana, I said, darling, I'm really sorry. I have got, oh, I've got seven minutes. I need jeans. And is there anything else that you think I would love? And she really quickly found those Victoria Beckham jeans. Let me get them. While I was trying these on, she said, oh, she put it into the changing room. She said, oh, what about that, this dress? And I just said, yes, I love it. Quickly tried it on and am absolutely over the moon. So, Juliana, thank you. I will leave all the details to the things that I just talked about. So, Vanessa Rose, Somerset. Juliana's details, Tam Mason's hand oil, the Balance Me face drops, and of course the L'Occitane because I'm just loving, 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 loving my bouncy hair at the moment. So all of the, those details will be in the description of this video below. But at the moment, I think I'm just going to waft around in this dress for a little bit longer. So I actually have just changed the shoes to this navy pair with a little brooch here. They're from June, they are actually quite old, but I haven't worn them very much. But actually I think they work really well with the dress rather than the nude pair. So, um, you know, you can change an outfit by changing your accessories, the color of your shoes to handbag. And if, I mean, I think this dress warrants a hat. I've got a lovely little navy hat, which is up in the attic in a hat box. I'm not gonna get that out now. But you can change your look by changing your accessories. And actually, I think the navy shoes work really well with it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below whether it is the beige pair. Drop it away. Uh, these. Or these. I've also got a little bit of a foot problem at the moment. I have got an ingrowing toenail, so actually, I'll tell you that story in a minute. These or these, what do you think? Let me know down below. Um, yes, <laughs> back to my foot problem. I've got an ingrowing toenail on my big toe. I've never had one before, and I ignored it for quite a while, thinking that maybe it was just the way I cut my toenail. But then I investigated more closely, compared it to the other one and thought mm, there is something going on. So I've got a podiatrist appointment booked in, but not for, I think, a couple of weeks. And then the other night when Gus was ill and he shouted, Mama, I went running out of bed, sleepy, and crashed into, I don't even know what I crashed into, but something, my little toenail, and I ripped it up. So... I did manage to put those shoes on to show you, but I've got a little bit, so it's both big toe and little toe on the same foot. It's a little bit sore, so I've got a plaster holding down my toenail on that foot. It's probably too much info. Um, sorry if you um, hate feet talk, but that's what's going on at the moment. So I'm feeling a bit like a lame, overtired duck at the moment. I don't even know why I'm calling myself a duck, but anyway. Anyway, anyway, let me know about the shoes. Would love your advice. I'm thinking probably navy shoes and little navy clutch bag, navy hat would look really, really sophisticated. Hopefully we're gonna to go to the races this summer. Got a couple of things, um, Archie's Levers dinner. There's a few, few things in the diary and you can tell I'm pretty overexcited about this dress. I have brought you up to the greenhouse and these are the things that I bought the other day and took you to the garden centre with me. Everything needs a good water. I didn't get in here yesterday because of Gus not being very well. So I'm going to give these a good water and then just tend to my tomatoes and cucumbers. 
along here as well. So I have, luckily I have water in here. I need to get these all planted. Whether I have time today or not, I don't know, but we'll just see how we do. Some lettuces for the kitchen garden and some leeks and some more lettuce. And then these cat mints here. I'll, I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put those. And I've got a couple of TVs too. Now I grow my tomatoes and I have done for a number of years in these and they have got water and a wick. So actually they don't need watering. You've just got to make sure that they're topped up. These need tying up. I'm just going to balance them. And the important thing with tomatoes, and actually I haven't done these, is to take off the little shoots. These have got bigger than they should have done. But you want to take those shoots off because it focuses the growing on to the fruit, the tomatoes themselves, rather than new growth. And you want to try and catch them when they're quite little. I'll just put those down there. These need tying up desperately. I'll just put that round there for now. And I have got some tomatoes growing, which is very exciting. So at least once a week, you want to come in and just nip that new growth off. It is really important. These are growing really well. I don't know if you can see, I've got little, little cucumbers just beginning to start where the flowers are. So that is very, very exciting. And then here I've got two aubergines and some courgettes, which are beginning to do their thing, which again, is really exciting. Look, you see down here, there's a little courgettes, they're yellow ones, and the tomatoes are coming on. So I need to tie those up. Again, I'm not sure if it's a job for today or for tomorrow, but I need to do it soon because they're growing really, really well. So I had my dahlias in here last year, but actually I bought these peonies, which I got, um, gosh, in the spring from Sarah Raven. So these are really quite new ones. And this one has been in for a year and I've had one flower, which is really exciting. I need to deadhead that. But I'm gonna put this catmint in this bed here, just to add a little bit of color. And it's so fragrant. It's just really lovely up here by yard i've got this rose has just gone crazy i put too much horse manure in here and it's just gone wild but this this rose was a mother's day present gosh three or four years ago from the children and it's so lovely when it comes into bloom which hopefully won't be long because there are lots and lots and lots of buds starting so i'm very excited about this and this is a David Austin, let me show you, I can't remember what it's called, Maid of Kent Climbing Rose. And it's um, yeah, hugely, hugely successful. And it's just really lovely having this, this rose on this, on this stable wall. My roses, I get lots of questions about these roses. So I've got two rose buds here, either side of the steps, I'll show you properly in a mo. And I put these rose beds in when mummy died, in memory of her. I've talked about this before, but I'll, I'll quickly, um, for those of you that are new here, I've got Lola, who is, um, I might have to put her away, very friendly. Um, I contacted David Austin and I gave them the measurements of the flower beds and I told them that the colours that I liked and they suggested and told me sort of how many plants, they've got this wonderful service and so they guided me on putting in these rose beds. Lola, you're, this is not very helpful. Anyway, I posted a picture on my Instagram recently and had lots of questions and people asking, you know, what fertilizer do I use, etc., etc. 
18 months ago, I put um, quite a lot of horse manure on these beds. I've done nothing since, but it is all in the pruning, the winter prune. So you want to prune when, when the plants are dormant, when there's no growth. So January, February time is the best time to give your roses a really good prune. I have got a YouTube video which I filmed with my friend Miles and I will link that um, in the description of this video so if you want to watch that uh, video tutorial you can um, because the winter prune is really really crucial but also what's crucial is deadheading so I have Lola and a bucket and literally you just snip the dead heads off and you need to keep on top of it. Oh, Lola, you really are going to be a pain. She's emptying my bucket. Anyway, it's fine, we'll carry on. But you want to just keep regularly deadheading. This is something I try and do on a weekly basis. Just come out here. Gus is actually really helpful at deadheading. And just snip off the deadheads. And then you'll get an abundance of roses. You know, throughout the season which is really really lovely so I'm just going to crack on and get dead heading The other thing that you want to do when you're deadheading is just have a look at the leaves and just check for black spots, check for any disease and if you've got any leaves, I haven't got an example at the moment, that aren't looking very good, it's important to cut them off because otherwise the disease can be transferred between the roses. So I snip those off as well at the same time. I try not to spray with anything try to be as environmentally conscious and organic as I can be. Lola, stop it. She's got a habit of um, eating things that she shouldn't, including roses. Notice that I've got foxgloves in my rose beds, and actually these are self-seeding, and I think it just looks wonderful. I love the foxgloves amongst the roses. I think it looks really pretty. It wasn't planned; it just happened, and I love how nature does that. And a friend once said to me, "A weed is a flower growing in the wrong place." And, you know, sometimes it's good to pull them up and sometimes actually it's lovely to leave them and enjoy them. And with these folks gloves, I am leaving them and I am enjoying them. I found a leaf that's not looking so good. So when they're looking like that, I actually just snip them off. now you can see that I've got the roses on either side so I just felt that it was really lovely to have the steps in the middle and these two rose beds before it was just lawn there was sort of nothing there and it felt like it needed something more and actually it's really lovely when people come in and park their cars they see the roses and people often comment and actually I had a long conversation with the ambulance driver um, and and his crew Lauren and Dan they were amazing they were such lovely people and they said wow look at those roses and we had a long chat about them and yeah well no I mean not a really long chat about them I didn't bore them stupid but we talked a little bit about roses and gardening and things like that so um, I feel really lucky that I've got these two beds we've still got the climbing frame there the children well not so much the children use it but when we've got smaller children they come and love it and use it but there will become a time probably in the not too distant future that the climbing frame will will go we might um i don't know rehome it give it away to somebody um but 
the children spent many, many happy hours playing up there, which is really lovely. Anyway, enough waffling. I need to deadhead this lot. I finished deadheading here. These two <laughs> are in the shade playing and then we come round the corner into what I call my secret garden. I love this space. So I've got my herbs here and then I've got this bed here which I need to come and deadhead. My peonies have been amazing this year. I've picked quite a few for the house. I need to take off those deadheads there's a tractor going past but look let's take that close just beautiful and some alliums back there this grass got a little bit battered in the wind I need to deadhead those roses and then I've got this catmint here which is just amazing I love watching the bees buzz around it and then a couple of benches Obviously the wisteria, which has finished flowering now, and I need to get some more ties um, put up because it's trailing down here so we can get it growing along the front of the house. But I love, 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 love this space out here. And when there's not cars and tractors going past, it's actually very peaceful. They're naughty, naughty, naughty Labrador puppies and her little tiny, tiny, tiny sidekick, Florence. So the box balls that I planted where the Atter of Rose geranium is didn't survive. I didn't think they were going to. So I've actually just put these geraniums in here and Smell and Lola are <laughs> just heavenly. And then through the garden gate, I'm gonna do a quick garden tour. I'm not going to show you much in the kitchen garden because I need to plant some more things up in there and it's actually too hot. Oh, so this bed Simon wanted to lose when we put the pool in, but I've convinced him to keep it. It needs a good weed and actually, no, Lola, get down. She's jumping up at me. Lola, sit. Here and here is where I'm going to put the new Hebe's in that I bought at the garden centre the other day. I'm going to leave the dogs in the garden. Lola, stay. She's very excited. She needs to go for a walk in a minute. No, stay. Stay, stay, stay. Through the little gate and we have the trampoline. And then I tried to rescue those box balls, but I don't think it's going to happen. I have my sweet Williams, my fox loves. These all self-seeded too. And then... I have my rhubarb and my asparagus. Now this asparagus bird, I can't pick this year, but I can pick it next year. I've got to let it die back and then I'll cut it back and I just try and keep it as weed free as possible. I put quite a lot of horse manure in here um, in the early spring and I think that really helped the asparagus. I'm gonna swing you around and take you into the orchard. Now I have bought a new chicken coop but I'm not rushing but I do want to have chickens back in this area we'd have to have a little bit of a rethink got the fruit trees up here and then into the kitchen garden I want to get two troughs to grow carrots but I think that will probably be next year now it's a bit late to plant carrots but I have got lettuce, I have got shallots here which are doing really, really well and I've got garlic alongside, some more rhubarb over there. I've got potatoes back here. I've got my dahlias in here this year and my sweet peas which need tying up. I've got some beans along the back 
of this section that will grow up against this wire. And then in here, my red currants are beginning to look amazing. Look at those red currants. Let's take you up close to have a look. It's not going to be long before I am making red currant jelly. Love red currant jelly. And then the strawberries have also been amazing. I need to go and get a bowl and come up here and pick them. Look at those strawberries. Really good. And some more red currant. Oh, look. Look at the strawberry. And some more red currants here. So I've got more bits to plant out in here, lettuces and leeks. I think that's it actually. I've decided that we're only going to grow things that we really, really are going to eat. Otherwise there's just no point. I learned that lesson last year. And actually last year I thought I was really sensible, but there were a few things. The spinach wasn't hugely successful. I'm not going to plant anything out now because it's so unbelievably hot. I'm not dressed for it, I'm wearing trousers. And um, it's just too hot to plant things out. So that's a job for early in the morning or in the evening or certainly a cooler day. I'm gonna go inside and get a drink. So I've come out here with this little one and naughty Lola behind me. So I've got, <laughs> got a selection of toys. I've got an elder flag cordial. It's so hot, it's quite nice to sit sit in the shade for a moment. But I've been thinking lots about things recently. Um, and I just thought I'd sit down and chat to you for a mo. Simon and I were talking the other evening that this has been like a bit of a crazy term so far. I think with Gussie starting his new school and just lots going on, all three playing cricket at weekends and it's just a bit bonkers. Our weekends aren't our own. And we seem to have very little time for one another, apart from our trip down to Devon to see rockfish. We haven't had much time recently, and so we're kind of stealing moments to chat to one another, whether that's six o'clock in the morning or, or um, in bed at night, just kind of catching up on things, because we seem to be passing ships. And I think because Gus hasn't been very well, you know, it's made me reflect on, you know, that this is a bit of a crazy season in our life. And I don't mean season as in spring, summer, autumn and winter. I mean season as in a phase. It's a bit of a crazy phase in our life. Um, but that changes. And I know come September, it will change again. And we just sort of have to adapt and be flexible. I mean, yesterday, <laughs> oh, she's scratching. Florence. Yesterday was not the day I had planned at all. I had planned that I was going to film most of the day. I was going to catch up on some admin. Um, Coco and I were going to go for a ride yesterday evening and, and none of that happened. But that's life and we, um, we're getting really good at adapting and being flexible and going with the flow, aren't we? There's a bug on the tablecloth which you can't see but Florence has got her eye on it. What's that, mummy? Push it onto the floor. Anyhow, um, yeah, it is a bit of a crazy season. I am going to talk to you quickly about, you know, brands and things. And obviously, last week's video was all about rockfish and our trip down to Devon. And I love working with brands, but I only, only, only work with brands that I wholeheartedly kind of believe in, that I would buy myself, that I am that I have tried, that I have tested. I don't want to share anything with you guys that I don't believe in and I'm not passionate about. And so, you know, it's great that I'm working with um, with some wonderful brands from Peachy Belts to Pear Socks to uh, L'Occitane and Rockfish and all of those things. Because, you know, for me, I love sharing things that I really believe in, that I'm passionate about. Um, I'm often being asked questions and for me, you know, I don't, I don't buy loads and loads of clothes. I buy a lot of pre-loved stuff, which I know is frustrating when people message and say, oh, where's your shirt from? And this is from Gap and it's probably 
it's probably about eight years old but I love it and it's just easy to kind of throw on and I'm not precious about it so I'm happy to kind of go and do some gardening but it's just a lovely lightweight cotton um but yes I'm, I'm really rambling but I just want you know it's lovely to be able to work with brands and share things with you but it's things that I really really am passionate about I actually tried to film Simon um, and his views on the fish that we ate last week and he was like oh take that camera away from me he was tired it had been a long day but that t-bone turbot oh my goodness it is so delicious it was so easy to cook really 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 scummy and not a fishy fish if that makes sense just a really a florence that's not helpful not a fishy fish just a really lovely light fish with a really kind of delicate flavor so that's really scrummy i've got my rockfish discount code which is charlie 15 which is available until the end of july so do um take advantage of that because it is so 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 good it is it is, it is, it is. Anyway, this week's video has been a little bit of a random selection from the garden centre to deadheading roses to a little bit of shopping. Oh, and a facial with Wendy. I haven't talked to you about my skin. It feels so soft and so lovely, even though I'm very tired. Um, I love seeing Wendy. I didn't vlog after my appointment with her because I just was tired. And I just, um, you know, I think sometimes when you sit down and you stop, I just really unwound and let Wendy do her thing. But my skin is feeling really lovely. It did have a little bit of um, peeling, which was what we were going for. That was the aim of the game. So I was expecting that, but just a tiny bit around my mouth area, literally for like 12 hours and then, um, then it was gone. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and I am sending you lots of love. Leave me a comment below which shoes, the black or the nude ones, which do you prefer? I um, would love to know. And I will see you again next week. And in the meantime, I'm sending you lots of love and have a very, very happy weekend from Florence and I and that crazy Labrador puppy. We've also got Bonnie over there asleep, Penny asleep there, and I don't know if you can see them, but Tess and Maud are asleep over there. So <laughs> six dogs in the garden while I'm chatting to you, and I think they've all been pretty well behaved. <laughs> I'm not with it at all today. I realise I didn't talk to you about my barbecue course. By the time this video comes out, it will be available, and so I will leave the details of that below. But it's basically a week-long course teaching you how to barbecue. I have roped in a couple of experts. I mean, a real, real expert. He's from South Africa. He's such a pro. And then I roped in my husband as well. But I am showing you how easy it is to barbecue. I have just turned the arga off. And so I am planning on doing a lot of barbecuing and I can do it myself now because I have learnt and I'm sharing all of that knowledge and some amazing recipes with you all in this course. So the details are down below if you would like to find out more about it. And if you've got any questions, then just send me a message, email me, leave me a comment and I will reply and tell you more about the course. But I'm really, really excited about this one because I have learned so much as well from um, creating it for, for everybody. <laughs>